good for them, but um, as we all know, uh, there are other countries like this one uh, where people do not yet have these opportunities. And, um, we need to make sure that um, we need to work on increasing freedom everywhere. I'm sure that most of you know the slogan uh, is often attributed to uh, Frédéric Bastiat, um, who said, uh, or was supposed to say at least, um, if goods don't cross borders, then soldiers will. And he basically, by that, he made a very strong case, arguing that uh, it's really um, open markets that are the surest uh, way to prosperity. Sadly, a hundred years after, um, in this very city, um, an event happened, the, as you all know, the unfortunate assassination of the Archbishop of Ferdinand by a Serbian ultra-nationalist, which triggered World War One and, in consequence, the World War II, the Cold War. And we haven't, less, we haven't obviously learned uh, the lesson what this camera was uh, trying to tell us. Because 25 years after the fall of the Iron Curtain, uh, again, once more, actually, soldiers are crossing borders in this continent in a manner that is unprecedented and um, in a manner that the borders have changed in a way um, that are not isn't. We do, as people who care about liberty, have a moral duty to be opposed to any kind of oppression, and especially one that is completely and utterly unwarranted, uh, deceptive, and immoral. And there flows uh, a um, moral obligation, a charter course that's guided by our principles. And that means basically when it comes to dealing with aggressors, we need to make sure that we don't give in to, um, to reactionary uh, responses. We need to make sure that we open our markets, let people from everywhere uh, come and, uh, and live anywhere, basically. Let's make sure that um, free trade and the freedom of movement is not something confined to an elite group of 25 countries in Europe, but can actually uh, reaches um, to the rest of the continent and eventually uh, to the rest of uh, the world. Because only then will the Bastia's vision uh, become a, a reality. Uh, of course, the struggle of liberty is not only about that. Um, I'm sure most of you are, are aware of what the tax freedom is. It's basically the day uh, in the year, when you take a uh, whole year, um, after which you finally earn money for yourself. And before that day, you basically only um, basically work for the government and for the taxes that you pay. And in most European countries, unfortunately, this tax freedom day is now in the second half of the year, meaning that uh, we actually work more than half of the year for the government. And when we basically give more than half of our productivity to someone or to some entity, then uh, it goes far beyond any kind of minimum welfare state or social safety that even uh, some of us liberals uh, support. Because then um, it can almost be called theft. And this is something that uh, we need to work against. So I would suggest let's make use of this day to learn about liberty. Let's uh, exchange our points of view. Uh, let's find a way how to, how to um, improve our lives, how to also um, increase our own liberties in our personal lives, how we can uh, raise awareness um, in terms of how to combat uh, the influence of excessive coercion that uh, is, is a reality. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to give the floor now to Adrian Chavlich, who is a senior local coordinator for Students for Liberty and uh, is also been in charge of uh, organizing this event and uh, also the founder of uh, the organization uh, Multi.